So okay, let's start. I've been using this baby uh, for like uh, five months now, three months now. Actually, I didn't count at that time. And I've been using it with the Rode NTG mic that I'll show you right now. And uh, I just want to share this video and show you guys uh, or give you more detailed information about it, what did I like and what I didn't like about this camera before you plan to buy this camera. Now, first of all, with this uh, microphone right here, uh, the sound quality is way, be way better because uh, the built-in microphone is actually really bad. It's not it's not bad in sense of quality It's bad in sense of because it's up here. So basically if you are filming You will you will record your own breath or whether you're touching something here You will record that voice and basically if you're fil filming somebody that's talking uh, like in front of you uh, You will basically not hear and basically when you put a camera and you're filming somebody who is talking um, you will not hear it uh, because uh, well you will hear it obviously but you will hear all the surrounding sounds in, uh, also so that's why I bought this uh, Rode NTG uh, I believe it's a Rode NTG Video Mic Pro um, but uh, Video Mic Pro uh, made in Australia Rode microphones and um, Actually, I forgot maybe it was video mic 2 pro air or something like this so uh, but what this baby does it's uh, It records uh, Directly what's speaking in front of you, but I did notice is that basically uh, if somebody is speaking in front of you like from a distance of five meters like uh, uh, This could be right straight next to the car in front of me if you record him from a from that distance and further uh, you will get out his sound really nicely, but if you are recording somebody that's uh, directly in front of you The camera will hear all the surrounding noises also basically if you're if I film somebody and I'm talking like this My voice will be really in a low low bass voice. It will be really low also with this microphone you can uh, turn on some kind of cut edge or turn the volume up down uh, and also you can do this in the camera so if you're wanting to buy a camera like this uh, you, uh, it, it depends what you will be doing with the camera, but basically I suggest that you also get a microphone. Uh, I bought this camera on eBay uh, without any warranties. Uh, uh, they delivered it to me with DP, uh, FedEx or DPD Courier, I, I don't remember actually. And uh, without any warranty, they said they have a warranty, I just send the camera back. But uh, why I bought it outside Europe is because... Uh, in Europe, they have 30 minute l l video recording limitations. So I bought it outside Europe just to have the additional 30 minutes of recording because I do record sometimes two hours non stop and so on. So let's get started about the camera. Oh, I put the bag away, but that's okay. Let's get started with the camera. Uh, well, the thing uh, why I actually bought this camera. Uh, the the Panasonic Lumix is because when well, I put it away just so that I can drive it's the it's because um, uh, I, I wanted to decide I wanted to buy a camera which is really good and I was looking also at low light that's that was the idea why I bought this camera at low light uh, because many times I had my previous GVC camera, which is basically many uh, photographers and filmmakers, uh, which I know they said it's uh, complete crap. The camera is completely useless. Uh, but I bought it for really good money. It was a pro half professional camera, so semi professional or something. Uh, I thought, well, what well, was well, so bad and so on. Uh, but. Uh, it was that that camera was really bad in low light. It turned the pictures turned red like uh, the noise got up real high and the frame rate dropped. Uh, when you edit the video, it's like uh, like 20 or 50 frames a second, and sometimes uh, you cannot even import the video from the GVC which I had before. Uh, you have to convert it to another format. So it's basically. Uh, huge problem problems with it so that's why I decided okay I need a camera that performs well in low light and also um, in a reasonable price uh, I, I wasn't looking for a professional cameras I was looking for a camera that I can use easily and so 
I got up to two cameras. One was the Sony A7 and the other was uh, uh, GH4. Wait. And the other, was, other one was suggested from my friend, which was the GH4. And I was also looking to the camera of uh, Canon XC10 or something like this, because it has 4K. And when I started to looking and searching through reviews, uh, uh, re reviews which other, other filmmakers were putting out, they said it's a complete crap. Uh, and they suggested a couple of cameras, including this GH4. So... Uh, then I was decide then I was choosing man the Sony a7 uh, or the GH4 and I didn't know that there's a GH3 also but I was looking at the GH4 and there is a GH4R right now come that kind of came out uh, and I was looking which camera to buy and uh, the the thing is I wanted to buy the Sony a7s because it's a, a really nice film film camera and it it has a super low light capacity really super low light but it costs more than gh4 and also it needs it needs lenses uh it has a not huge variety of lenses and they, they need some sony a7 lenses which i looked they are so also are really expensive so in my sense uh, 2200 euros for the camera and uh, you still have a 30 minute limitation and without 4k resolution uh, so that was for me that was like ah uh, i need the 30 i need unlimited video re recording or even two two hours would be really okay and then i started searching about the gh4 camera which has uh, 4k resolution unlimited video recording and there's a couple of features which i really liked also and a friend from my friend said it's like when you if you want to have a good performance in low light you just buy a lens that has a uh, you would say high or low uh, ap aperture 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 or how you say it well basically it means that the uh, lens diaphragm opens really widely so that's why I bought also uh, the lens uh, 20 millimeter lens with 1.7 of aperture or focus how you say and uh, it does really good in low light actually it does better uh, than with your eyes and I was I was I've then I bought another lens which is basically a zoom lens because this 20 millimeter lens is not a zoom lens then I bought another which is a zoom lens uh, which is a zoom lens and it's completely uh, it has 3.5 focus uh, and it has 40 to 170 millimeters well the 40 millimeter lens is too big I mean like it zooms in too big if you want to buy a lens uh, for your Panasonic uh, GH4 I suggest you buy a lens which is 12 millimeters to uh, 42 millimeters or 14 millimeters to 42 millimeters there is a, a kit you can buy but get as low uh, aperture as you can I saw that there is a one lens with 3.5 aperture basically you still would need uh, some lights if you are filming in a low light uh, uh, room basically lower low right low light room in my sense means that you basically to film something with a 3.5 uh, aperture uh, this lens with the gh4 you need uh, uh, ceiling lights to be turned off uh, but i'm filming in rooms in low light rooms when there is only one light bulb and uh, or a couple of candles burning you can still record it with this you can still see the image and you can still use it uh, depending how, how you set up the camera because you can set the shutter speed down to 25 uh, focus wide open to 1.7 uh, and if you have 1.4 lens there's also 1.4 focus lens uh, I believe you can get even more li low light performance on it and you just uh, turn the ISO up to 3200 you will still get some noise uh, but the video still will be useful and uh, you can do really good low lights with this camera when you even are filming in street lights uh, on the street with this gh4 you can still see better than with your eyes you can turn it really bright up uh, but it depends actually how and what um, and what exactly are you using and what exactly you are planning to use this camera for but uh, my lens suggestion 
for for you would be if you want to do low light, uh, buy a lens with uh, 1.4 or 1.7 aperture and higher. And also, uh, this lens is really thin. You would say it's not like a huge lens, and therefore uh, you have a good stability with it. Uh, it, it's really stable to film. You don't you don't see the shaking uh, that much. Um, also, what I when I got the Olympus uh, 40 millimeter to 170 millimeter lens, it's really horrible. You, when you want to film and you want to zoom something slowly in, uh, you try to zoom and everything shakes. And then you put it in a Adobe Premiere Pro and reduce the shakiness uh, the, and stabilize the video a little bit. But it's still completely useless. Uh, so if you want to buy a zoom lens, uh, make sure it's as thin as possible, and also stability. And uh, uh, what I was looking at lenses, they have this power zoom. I really suggest the power zoom because then you will reduce the shaky, uh, shaky frames, uh, shake, shakiness a little bit. Because when you try to uh, roll the zoom, it's like uh, you know the camera, the camera shakes. So if you are not a professional filmmaker or anything, I suggest you buy uh, one lens for low light. Uh, and another lens about this thin lens, low light lens, used um, for like two hundred dollars, but I euros. But uh, I, I believe a new lens costs around four hundred euros. So basically, it's around uh, three hundred, five hundred dollars in that area. And uh, so uh, this is about the lenses. So I suggest you buy a low light lens with uh, low aperture. 1.4, 1.7, 1.2. Uh, if you, I think, if you buy 1.0 or 0.95, I, I believe I saw these uh, lenses. I believe everything will be completely blurry because uh, the lower the aperture, the blurrier the images get. It's like creating the uh, cinematic image, like uh, something is really high in focus, and uh, in front and the back of the what you are filming gets blurred out. This creates like an a, a, an effect. Uh, but for example if you push the camera a millimeter or a centimeter forward and back everything blurs out so basically I believe under 1.5 1.4 it'll be extremely difficult to film something in focus because the focus will change all the time but I, I believe uh, that uh, according to these uh, what level filmmaker are you it really depends on this so this is about lenses I suggest uh, low light aperture lens, uh, 1.4, 1.5, 1.7, and uh, a zoom lens with a power zoom and a built in power zoom and built in focus so that you can zoom uh, without shakiness and so on and so on. But also, this zoom lens I really suggest uh, 2.8 aperture because sometimes I want to use like 2.5. Uh, to get the blurriness like something is in focus and the back of the which I'm filming is out of focus creating like a uh, Like an interesting uh, Like an interesting animation, but the 3.5 Basically in a room most of the objects will be in focus. So it's like uh, also You lose a couple of effects on it uh, So again, so next we'll talk about the camera itself. So uh, the camera is really lightweight uh, uh, my, one of my friends, well, let's care, compare it to uh, Canon uh, 5D Mark II. Uh, I believe the camera is, uh, is a little bit expensive, the Mark II, but the Mark II is really heavy. The Mark II is really heavy. Uh, it's like I was holding it, it's like, oh man, I will get tired if, uh, if I need to film like this in a few hours. Uh, also, the Mark II video quality is way worse it's uh, you can see the noise is higher uh, the color effects are lower everything is uh, in terms of filming everything on the mark ii is bad it's, it's a couple of levels lower uh, on the gh4 we were comparing these two cameras the mark ii and the gh4 we were filming oranges in uh, one light uh, on, on top of the oranges was only one light and the GH4 perfectly, all details. And when you film, for example, a shadow is like uh, s uh, the light is coming from the top, and there's a shadow uh, on the uh, lower side of the oranges. 
the GH4 shows uh, also the details in the shadows, like textures and everything. Uh, the the Mark II just black. You just see like something, something red, not orange, something red. Noise dots and with their shadows that's black. On the GH4, it was like yeah, you can turn a little bit more uh, brighter. You can turn a little bit more brighter and perfectly you can see it perfectly so basically uh, and also there was a camera gh7 that filmed the same image but the gh7 was slightly slightly better than the mark ii but i believe the mark ii in terms of video quality and in, in higher lights and everything will be the same but the gh7 also the quality was the same basically what i decided is that the gh4 7 and the uh and the Mark II uses some kind of different sensor or different image uh, um, rendering features, but the GH4 was like perfect. It's like, oh, I'm really, I'm really satisfied with this camera in low lights uh, completely, I would say. And then let's talk about the abilities, what you can do with this camera. Basically, you can record uh, videos 4K, 100 megabits a second, uh, full full HD 200 megabits a second well basically the 4k uh, everything what's from 50 megabits a second and higher uh, no matter what the resolution is uh, would uh, drink your computer's resources really quick and you need high RAM and more than four processors to even render this video or even to work with this video uh, but you can do also low uh, megabits a second video recording uh, which is M2TS format which still the Adobe Premiere Pro CC uh, can you can easily import it into and so basically what it means is that uh, you can ro record also low quality full HD videos or HD videos and so on and so on what this means is that uh, you can record like I have a 40 a 64 gigabit card SD card, uh, you inserted it inside and you record up to five and a half hours of video or six hours or so uh, in lower qualities. And the next thing is about the camera, it doesn't heat up. Uh, if I was filming also in 4K, the camera turned warm. I was filming two hours with uh, 28 megabits of uh, full HD. Uh, the camera was barely warm barely warm it's like uh, the camera doesn't heat up at all and also I'm really satisfied is with the battery life the camera can run like uh, if filming on the full HD 28 megabits uh, a second uh, I believe you can get up to three hours of non-stop recording but you have to keep in mind that uh, if you turn off on the Wi-Fi it may be two hours and if you keep the screen open maybe also two hours so basically up to three hours you can easily easily record and I bought two batteries one was from the eBay it records like one hour and one was the original battery it records like three hours so basically I bought from eBay original Panasonic battery pack blah 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 it's still not that uh, doesn't hold that much as the original battery and uh, about about uh, you can do uh, how's this slow motion picture slow motion filming and uh, you can turn it up to full HD 90, 96 frames a second and uh, actually I, I have been filming uh, the slow motion videos with with, with this uh, uh, GoPro Hero camera the second version uh, it's anything like it it's like way better it's like way better the slow motion picture is really good uh, I've, I've been filming also with the um, Panasonic no it's like GVC I don't remember the model the previous camera before this I was filming and uh, when you it, it filmed in 20, 24 frames a second which was really annoying for me and also I will tell a really good feature about this camera also GH4 and when you try to slowly the, reduce the 24 frames a second to slower motion it turns 
like one frame there and one frame back it's like two frames it's like one is fogged out and everything is normal and like the, the the frames go like this it's like what the hell is this uh but this camera doesn't create these frames it has uh, solid frames every frame so basically if you want to cut something you don't get like uh, half frame half there uh, but the slow motion movie the slow motion videos are really perfect it's like frame to frame perfectly and uh, you sometimes even watch man it's even boring to watch it's so perfect it's even really boring to watch uh, you just see everything as in slow motion and when you record in slow motion you can play back the video in slow motion you don't need to like reduce the speed or something you get it already slowed down to like 30 frames and uh, also the really nice feature about this camera, the GH4 camera, is that, uh, for example, you're filming a computer screen and the screen gets like, uh, sh I don't know how to say, shaped. Uh, you can see the black lines of it. It's like uh, the frequencies don't match of the camera. And sometimes when you film the lights, the lights get shaky, shaky, shaky. And they also the frequency doesn't match of this camera. Uh, but what you can do, you can change the frequency from uh, 50 hertz to 60 hertz and to 24 hertz also. And uh, therefore, for example, you're filming something, oh yeah, okay, this light is shaky, you turn it back to uh, like 60 hertz a second and the camera films normally. The only thing that does change from these uh, two, uh, uh, two frequency shifts is that, that firstly, uh, the frame rate is different uh, to like uh, 50 hertz a second you get uh, 25 frames and also 50 frames a second and if you're filming on the 60 hertz uh, frequency you get like 60 frames a second and 30 frames a second I always film at 30 frames a second because uh, I love the the motion the I will have filmed at 24 and 25 frames a second. It's like the images are shaky, shaky, shaky. I can, uh, it's like my eyes start to hurt when I watch this. Now this is a really good feature because uh, many of the photographers which I know, they're like, oh, they want to film something, but the light is shading. And they're like, oh my God, because somebody orders the light from eBay and they'll buy some local lights uh, in the local store. And the frequency, depending on where they are produced, changes. As of therefore, also the what you're filming some may shake and some uh, don't shake uh, the, the black lines you know I don't know how to say it in English and uh, also the time leaps I really love the time leaps I never used time leaps before I never even actually uh, created any time leap shots before uh, but with this camera it's really simple uh, you turn the uh, photographer uh, the photographer mode uh, to auto and you just turn the dial basically what you do is you you switch here to a i will switch for you so you can see right here you switch to a and then there is another 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 ring right here and you turn it to this one and then you press the center button right here and you can start doing time leaps. Uh, you enter when you when you will press the setup button right here. Uh, you will you will set up the, um, the details. Uh, how many frames? Uh, how how large interval interval? And um, and then when the time leaps is finished, I created a, a 24 hour time leaps video. Uh, it created some kind of 20,000 frames a second, uh, 20,000 frames, and then when it's finished, uh, the the camera asks for you whether you want to create a video right now, and you just click yes, and the camera create a video for you. You don't need to import it somewhere in uh, Premiere Pro or something, and the camera will create this video for you, and it's uh, way faster than the uh, than the computer does. Uh, but uh, it depends for example if you're shooting in night uh, I noticed that you take a shot the shot the shutter speed is like uh, the, the way the, the shutter is open for like 10 seconds and uh, you wait these 10 seconds and then the shutter closes and then it goes through a noise reduction and it can last up to 
10 seconds to 20 seconds. So basically, if you want to do a overnight shot uh, and midnight shot, you can, you can keep in mind that the one frame can last for like one minute. And therefore, you need. Uh, I had a continuous charger to displace the inside the battery pack, the wire, the battery. Man, Tāpēc, ka sākumā mēs izmantojām griķus un izmantojām vilnas kārstu, bet viņi vairāk kārtīgi nevar mazgāt, tāpēc viņi turmīcās uz tām lielajām mazgātavām vedu un tur savadās un vairs nav, nu nav, nav vietu. Tieši tāpēc arī tādi komplektīgi kāds atturītas un teķītas, aiziet katram vienīgi un līdzi mājā, viņi nav slimītas vairāk kārtīgi. Vilnī nekādi, tā lai viņi aiziet. Un tāpēc, ka tāpēc, ka tāpēc, ka tāpēc, ka Center a little bit uh, faster. So, and another thing which I really like about the camera is the screen. The screen is really good quality and good in colors, but it's too small. It's sometimes too small. Sometimes I want to like, hey, I cannot see where the focus is. I want to like, with my eyes, I start, and I don't see where the focus is. Uh, I need something a little bit bigger. But you can use the Wi-Fi connect to a remote screen or correct connect to a remote tablet whichever whatever you have and you can view it through there to like have a better better view of what you actually are filming so there are pluses and minuses about the screen also and uh, well, this is basically it oh, and also uh, there are a couple of options which I like and one of them is the the color standards Cine like D and Cine like we. Uh, these create like a cinematical, uh, cinematical effect on what you're filming. And they have the vlog profiles also, but I have never used the vlog profiles yet. I never even downloaded them. But I saw that you can, if you have the firm version of 2.3, but I have updated to 2.4 uh, instantly. Uh, but if you have the 2.3 version, you download on a mobile phone the application uh, 1.95, the image application uh, you can uh, you can turn the uh, you can turn the vlog through your mobile and then save it on your camera not even buying it so this was another option uh, which I missed but still uh, I believe you can buy it so overall about this camera uh, I'm 100% satisfied with this camera uh, in all ways and always it's like nothing ever I had before with the GVC camera which I had a camcorder and the quality in all fields I would say is perfectly fits my needs perfectly uh, so uh, if there is a question about recommendation and if I recommend this camera to somebody that's uh, uh, not a professional filmmaker uh, I would recommend this camera to those and this would be the best buy for those who are looking uh, for a camera that will cost around uh, one and a half thousand euros uh, or if you're doing uh, like the road NTG couple of variety of lenses you get everything around two thousand euros and also I saw that you can get a um, the speed booster Metabone or there's another brand of it you can plug it and you can use the Canon lenses uh, with all focus, low light abilities, and so on and so on. So, um, overall, completely satisfied. Uh, 
I'm just going through which I said and which I didn't say. Oh, and also there's a really good feature, the highlight shadows. Uh, what it does is that, for example, you're filming somebody and it has a shadow right here, you can brighten up the shadows and, it'll, and lower down the light. So basically, if you don't have lights with you, you can turn the image really good, the image quality really good. Uh, so you can uh, adjust to lighten up the shadows or lower down the shadows. The video, the camera can do it for you. Just and then you okay this for this current position the low light I need to turn the shadows a little bit brighter so I don't see them that much you turn it up and it's like okay perfectly but what I didn't notice is that in in low light uh, in low light environment uh, the shadow highlighting can put some noise where there are shadows because uh, the shadows still are low light and you, if you pop them up a little bit, you get some kind of a noise on it. But you can you can you can adjust the levels. In some levels there is noise, and some levels there isn't noise. So basically, it's up to you. And uh, so um, and uh, uh, photo photography. I'm not a photographer. I don't like uh, shooting fo uh, photographies on this camera. I like creating single shots, like pictures. Uh, I always do video recordings, but what I notice is that video quality is better than the uh, photo the pictures that you can take. But the pictures themselves, uh, the camera shoots really fastly. You can chuk, 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 chuk. it shoots really fastly, and uh, also uh, you can. There's a variety of settings which I don't know. You can turn the ISO up to 2.500 and shutter speed lower, but then when you turn to camera mode you can uh, uh, and you need still a little bit more light it's still too bright you can turn the shutter speed to 15 and uh, the frame rate is lower uh, but the light is much higher so basically you can cheat something from there you can uh, what, what i come across because when you're filming you cannot reduce the shutter speed lower than 25 or 30 frames but when you are uh, turn the manual mode uh, photography photography reduce the shutter speed to like five and turn it back to filming mode you can uh, you can turn the shutter speed as you wish so basically it's like well, there's a leak something or no i was like specially designed for that i don't know so if you're still looking for more light you can you can cheat a little bit on the shutter speed uh, but the pictures itself uh, i don't know actually it's like it's not my profile to even judge the quality uh, but when you zoom in in low light photography you can still see grain I believe the Canon Mark II uh, does better pictures than this camera uh, but I believe it's something to do with the uh, the program itself the sensor itself and the lenses itself so basically uh, I the photo, uh, picture quality is really good I had the GVC camera before uh, video quality Full HD in good lighting is okay, but pictures, no matter what you do, are horrible, useless. It's like uh, from a cheap mobile. Uh, but with this camera, the pictures are still useful. Uh, useful. They're useful. You can do good pictures with it also. It's like uh, it has it has an excellent camera uh, that you can film videos. Perfect, I would say, and it has a good uh, picture. It has a good. It has. Uh, you can take good pictures with it. Also, you just need to be a professional photographer to really use all the settings you can use on it, and you, like adjust the colors, adjust the uh, adjust the standards, adjust the ISO, and everything. So, uh, if you're planning to buy a camera, I really suggest this camera, depending on your budget or on your needs. I really suggest the GH4. So, uh, thank you for watching, and. Uh, 33 minutes of nonsense talking but I hope this video gave you some answers and let's look at this camera one more time Ta-da! and it's really small you can see my hand and it's like my hand light weighted and another thing which I don't like is the small recording button right here sometimes it's hard to press it and uh, but hey, you can use this button also it's no problem and uh, Everything is thought over. Uh, manual focus, autofocus. Ah, the manual focus and autofocus. 
it really depends on the lens which are you using it really depends on the quality of the lens this 20 millimeter lens is really horrible in, in terms of fighting focus but I've, I've been used I've been using the uh, other lenses and they find focus really fast really fast so uh, depending on uh, the, it, the focus really how fast he finds the focus it really depends on the lens uh, but there's manual focus and manual focus assistance uh, there's also leveling that you can see whether a camera is standing straight or not in two axes left right up down uh, you can see it on the camera uh, also what I know about the focus is that well uh, I try to use the manual focus so basically uh, try using the manual focus uh, because when you shoot something the focus the focus uh, goes back and forth back and forth trying to find the focus but when you're doing the manual uh, focus and you're filming somebody that will be always there just he will be moving uh, you can do it really good. You can do really good videos with it uh, doing manually. So it depends on actually what you're doing, what you're filming, but uh, also the manual focus. When you're filming manual focus, you can press a button and the camera will find the focus back uh, itself. So basically, you can easily do it uh, yourself. You and it zooms out in and tries to find the focus and locks the focus. So uh, about the focus, I was thinking at first uh, it's a tough decision. I need definitely a lens with autofocus and something like this. Uh, but then when I started filming, well, the focus, autofocus, uh, it's really good to have. But well, using in manual focus also, uh, it gives you more uh, more control over the camera because when you turn it out of focus, it like just goes back there, back there. You push it on the screen where you want to focus and the camera focuses there and also there's a good feature which I love is tracking focus uh, you press on somebody's face for example or a hand and he moves the hand forward back and the camera will, will focus this object always when you move the camera left up down it will keep focus there for, for example if you're tracking something like a car that's driving and you want to keep focus on it uh, and the camera will keep focus on it so this is a good feature also so i recommend this camera buy this camera if you don't if you don't, i'm not sure i'm really satisfied with it and uh, maybe in this video i'll put some videos that i have record on the gh4 so thank you for watching enjoy your time